All right, so we're looking for the average rate of change on the interval from zero to pi over two for y equals the cosine of two x. So that's really just basically calculating the rate of change like you did in algebra as slope. So we basically look at the change in y over the change in x on this interval. So that would basically just be f or y of pi over two minus y of zero. over pi over two minus zero. So y of pi over two is, you know, when you plug in pi over two in here, so the cosine of two pi over two, or the cosine of just pi, would be that, minus the cosine of zero over pi over two. And the cosine of pi is negative one. Cosine of zero is one, so we just have negative one minus one over pi over two, so we really just have negative two over pi over two. So it's negative, we have negative four over pi. So our answer is A. Right, number 13, what's the derivative of this equation? Y cubed plus Y equals X squared. Okay, so this is gonna involve implicit differentiation. So what that means is when, when, we're, when we take the derivative of any any um, expression involving y, we have to make sure we multiply it by dy dx. So we treat it just um, as we normally would when we're differentiating a function. So this would be 3y squared. And then we multiply 3y squared by dy dx plus the derivative of y, which is 1, times dy dx equals the derivative of x squared equals 2x. And then we're essentially gonna solve this equation for dy dx. So we can factor out um, a 3y squared and a one on the left. So that's the same as dy dx times 3y squared plus one equals 2x. And so then we just divide by 3y squared plus one. And then so that would just be, we get e dy dx is 2x over 3y squared plus 1. Or 14. All right, we got some analysis action we got to do here. So um, this is the graph of f of x. So we want to see which of these would make sense to be um, the graph of f prime of x. So let's understand what the, um, the graph of the derivative would behave on certain parts. So let's start with like um where it's zero. So like remember the the graph of the derivative or the graph of f prime of x are values of the tangent lines at every single point. So if we look at where the tangent lines are horizontal like here and like probably here and here that means on a graph of the derivative, it's gonna go through the horizontal axis. So we just put points there and there. We don't know what's going on before or after between. We just know that it's probably going through on zero so, or the x-axis at those points because that's where it looks like there's horizontal tangent lines. Then we wanna see what's going on between these points. We look at like how the tangents are um, um, being directed. Like from here to here, the tangent lines are negative. So that means between these two points, the graph of the derivative is gonna be you know, below that x-axis. We're gonna have negative values. We don't know exactly how it's behaving. We don't know how, like, how steep or we can get an idea, but let's just go from there. We know it's gonna be below the x-axis. Maybe this, again, I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure yet. We just know it's gonna be below the x-axis here. And here to the right, the tangent lines are all positive. So we know the graph's gonna be positive on this side. So um, all, all that means is the graph has to be above the x-axis. Again, we don't know if it looks like this. Is this just a, maybe an idea? So let's look at ones that have zeros here. First, that doesn't have it. 
this one does, but we don't have it's supposed to be negative here. And that's not it's not, it's not working. This one is negative and positive here, but it doesn't have a zero at the beginning. So it's not C. It looks like it's probably gonna be D because it ain't gonna be E because it goes negative again here and it's not um, what we want. So the answer is D. All right, so um, if we have F defined here as this piecewise function, which of these would be true? All right, so the limit as F of X approaches one from the negative side is equal to the limit as x approaches one from the positive side of f of x. So essentially what that means is that um, if you go to where x is one, let's just draw like a, like a dash line, I guess we'll say that line is x is one, we'll say. That means the graph on the left side and the graph on the right side have to be approaching the same number. So that to be like you know going towards um, whatever it is on. So what you can do is just you know technically you're not supposed to plug one into here, but if you did, what number would it be, so to speak? So if we plugged one into here, it would be three minus three minus two, or just one on the left side. And we know this is a linear graph, so going from the left side, the graph is going to be something like this. We go to um, one one. Now on the right side, the graph is this is an exp, this is a logarithm. Again, I can, I can just draw I can draw an idea of what it looks like. But what's actually important is what would what you would what you would get if you plugged one into here. If you plug one into here, you get the natural log of three minus two or the natural log of one. So at one, the natural log of one is zero because e to the zero is one. So you would actually have a point here. At um, one zero, the graph maybe looks like this. I don't, I don't know exactly, but probably what it is. Um, but that doesn't matter. See, what matters is that that on this side it's going to this point, and on this side it's going to that point. So this fir this first one's not going to be correct. Now let's look at um two, the limit of the derivative of f of x as x approaches one from the negative is equal to the limit of the derivative as x approaches one from the positive side. So um, we just want to see what the derivatives are now of each one. So f prime of x would be on top here, just the derivative of three x minus two, which is three. On bottom here, we're gonna use um, chain rule. So the derivative of the inside, which will be three over the inside over three x minus over 3x minus 2. So if you plugged in 1 into here, f prime of 1 on top, that, it's going to be 3 on top, and then on bottom, 3 over 3 minus 2, or 3 over 3 over 1 again. So it would just be 3 again. So this is good. So that, that's, that, that's true. And then um, for problem three, it ain't gonna be differentiable at, at one because if it doesn't even connect, um, then the left hand derivative is not, or the left hand derivative is not gonna equal to the right hand derivative because they both first have to go to the same point and, this, and they both have to be a smooth curve, so it's not gonna be that. Um, so it's just gonna be two, only two. All right, so good. Problem 16, or no, 16. All right, so we have the function f of x is equal to 2x cubed minus 4x squared plus 1. The application of the mean value theorem of f, or 2f, on the interval from 1 to 3 guarantees the existence of, of the value c, where c is between 1 and 3, such that, I read that kind of weirdly, but so basically, what is, what is the mean value theorem saying about this um, on this interval? So it's basically saying that um, if we're going to be we talking about a specific interval, that the derivative for some value in here is basically going to be equal to the average rate of change 
of this function on this interval. So just like we did in the, a couple problems ago, well, that's not even right. That this is right. Think about just think about just like the slope. Like what what's the slope? Um, like you did in algebra from 1 to 3 with this function. So it's basically you're going to use f of 3 minus f of 1 over 3 minus 1. So what you would get when you plug 3 into here, so 2 times, what is that? 2 times 3, 20, 54 minus 36 plus 1. Minus f of 1, so 2 minus 4, negative 2 plus 1, negative 1, over 2, let me just simplify that, so we get 18, 19, 20, over 2, the answer is just 10. Alright, um, now let's see the velocity of certain type of wave is given by this function, 3 root, the 3 times the sort of h, where h is the depth in meters of the water through which the wave moves. What is the rate of change in meters per second per meter of the velocity of the wave with respect to the depth of the water when the depth is 2 meters? Okay, so it basically, it sounds more complicated than this. Just evaluate the derivative of this, and um, since the function of, of h, just plug in 2 for that, find the derivative, find h is 2. So let's rewrite that as an exponent. So the square root of h is the same as h to the 1 half power. So v prime of h would just be 3 times 1 half, so 3 halves times h to the negative 1 half, which is just the same as 3 over 2 times the square root of h. And then we evaluate v prime of 2, v prime of 2 be 3 over 2 root 2. That's, that's right here. Problem answer C. Alright, oh, is it derivative? dy dt is negative 10 e to the negative t over 2 and y of 0 is 20. What's the value of y of, what's the value of, y of 6? Okay, so for this, um, we're going to use um, integration. So we're going to use separation of variables, multiply both sides by dt. So we'll have dy equals negative 10 e to the negative t over 2 power times dt. And we're going to integrate each of these because we want to get the function. So um, since we have the derivative, if we integrate the derivative, we'll go to the function. Integrating dy, this is just y. Integrating this, remember, whenever you're dealing with a function of e, it's pretty simple. It's um, kind of just understand that this part will never go away in your expression, and just either you're going to divide or multiply depending on the exponent. So, um, in this, you're um, if you were to differentiate, you would multiply by the derivative of this, or multiply by, by negative one half. But since you're integrating, instead of multiplying by negative one half, do the, do the opposite, divide by negative one half. That's the way I remember it. So it'd be like negative 10 e to the negative t over two. So always keep this in your answer, and then manipulate it somehow. Instead of multiplying by the derivative of this, we're gonna divide by the derivative of that, which is negative one half. And then that was, plus our c, of course. Um, so we get, let's simplify that, so we get y is 20 negative, 20 e to the negative t over 2 plus c. So we want to find, um, you know, our, you know, value of c essentially, or constant, what we're going to need. So we're just going to plug in 6 for t. So using our condition, y of 6 would be 20e to the negative 3 plus c. And actually, <laughs> we're worked backwards. First, we have to plug in this, because we, we're actually trying to find this. So we're going to use this to find c. 
So that was my bad. So that was weird. So what we do is um, we solve for C by plugging 0 in for T, and we're knowing that we should get 20. So we said 20 equal to 20 times E to the 0 over 2 or just 0 plus C. And that makes it easy because then 20 only equals 20 if E to the 0 is 1, so C has to be 0. So our function for um, our value of C is 0. So then, I mean, this doesn't, C we just won't make that 0 if we want. So y of 6 is just 20 e to the negative. We just have right here, it's just that. So it's just this. Right here. And so it'll just be b. All right, in 19, we have the function with the derivative defined by f prime of x equal to x cubed minus 4x. Which of the following values of x is the graph of a point of inflection? So we want to see what the second derivative is and see at um, what values does the second derivative go from concave up or to concave down or where it goes from positive to negative or negative to positive. So first find a potential point of inflection by calculating the second derivative, which will be 3x squared minus 4. Then we find where the second derivative is 0. So set this equal to 0. So add 4 divided by 3, so 4 thirds equals x squared. So then x, our, our potential point of inflection would be the square root of 4 thirds. So we want to see what's going on before 4 thirds, so on the interval from negative infinity to root 4 over 3. And then we want to see what's happening afterwards and from this from the interval root 4 over 3 to infinity. So we just test like um, we test some value. I like to always make like a chart to kind of guide my work. But um, we want to see what's the sign of the second derivative on this interval and what's the sign here. So we, just, we can plug in any, in any value here. So I'm plugging something easy. Plug in like, you know, this will be just plug in 0, actually. Plug in 0 in here, you can plug in 10. You plug 0 into the second derivative, you'll get 0 minus 4, you get negative 4, you get a negative value. So, um, it's concave down, the function is concave down, so the second derivative is negative. If you plug in 10 into here, you get 3 times 100 minus 4, so you get a positive number. In the, the graph is concave up. So then, since the graph of f that actually, goes from concave down to concave up, at this point, we can say there's a point of inflection at root 4 over 3. Now, um, it's very, now it's, they're very sneaky about this because um, they don't write it in this form. So let's remember how this works. Square root of 4 over 3 is the same as the square root of 4 over the square root of 3. The square root of 4 is just 2. And so we just look for the answer of C.